Hey everyone, today I'm excited to share my personal experience with the Sony A7CR. This isn't just a typical review, I try not to. It's an honest look at how this camera has held up for me over the last 6 months and what my experiences are. So I've used it everywhere, from travel shoots in places like Mokchao to beach photo shoots that I do and even professional filming projects like re recording interviews and films at the Intercontinental. It's become my go-to uh, go camera for almost all of my work and I want to give you a real sense of how it performs in different settings. As a photographer and a videographer, I've been doing this for nearly 10 years. I'm always focused on capturing authentic beauty in portraits and telling visual stories. For those of you that are considering the A7CR, I'll share what I genuinely like about it and then the things I think could be better as well. And of course, if you have any questions, please do drop them in the comments. I try to answer as much as I can, of course. And if there's any interest, I'd be happy to do a follow-up video to dive, dive in deeper. All right, let's start with a few of the challenges I've had with the A7CR. Because honestly, I think it's important to know both the good and the bad about the gear. So first, number one, I experienced an overheating issue. Uh, from the start, I noticed the camera could overheat, especially during long shoots or in warmer weather it would just power down mid shoot which was kind of frustrating so but after some experimenting and googling i found a solution online there are somewhere in the settings there's an option to allow the camera to keep going at a higher temperature and since i've turned that option on it's been a lot better so yes it does use up more battery also but it's worth it for uninterrupted shooting so if you're planning on using this camera in warmer areas or for longer sessions keep this in mind then there's the bluetooth connectivity i love being able to connect my phone to the camera even when it's off so i can quickly transfer photos and share them but there's a downside too if you leave the bluetooth on it will drain your battery not a big issue if you're mindful of it but it's definitely something to watch out for uh, especially on long shooting days speaking of battery life uh, also it could be stronger so the camera packs a lot of features into a small body battery life isn't endless for longer shoots or travel days i always carry one backup battery it's not a deal breaker or the end of the world but it's good to know up front if you're thinking about taking this camera on the road all right and finally the menu system sony menus are packed with options which is a good thing but they can be a little bit overwhelming if you're not used to them that is it's not the most intuitive setup but once you get the hang of it you'll be fine just know there's a bit of a learning curve from uh, if you're switching from another brand like canon or fuji all right now let's go over some of the positives now that we've gone through the challenges, let me tell you why the A7CR is my favorite camera and why it's the one I reach for almost every time. So first off, the compact design. This camera is small, light, and yet it's still full frame. It's really easy to bring it with me wherever I go, whether I'm having, heading to the beach for a portrait session or going off the beaten path in places like Mokcha. Uh, I travel, and I love that. I get all the quality of a bigger setup, without the bulk, which is huge for me uh, when you're traveling. And there's the 60 megapixel sensor. This resolution is amazing, especially if you love capturing like the details. Uh, with this sensor, I can still crop, zoom in, and still keep that crystal clear quality. It's perfect for both close-up portraits and wide landscapes. Uh, where it's really nice to have every bit of detail. One of the main reasons actually in the beginning why I chose the A7CR over the A7C2 is how well it handles both photos and videos. For video, I get nearly the full sensor readout with only a 1.2 crop factor, which means I can still use all of my full frame lenses and there's a payoff and still get beautiful sharp 4K footage with 60 frames. This flexibility is exactly what I need as someone who shoots both photos and videos and doesn't want to sacrifice quality either. All right, next, the Cinetone color profile. That is another feature I absolutely love. I really like it. For anyone who doesn't want to spend hours color grading, S Cinetone gives you beautiful cinematic colors straight out of the camera. Skin tones look natural, and the colors are balanced as well. I used it in my recent rooftop video at Wink Hotels, 
and the footage looks so clean and professional straight out of the camera it's a great option for anyone who wants to uh, wants to have high quality video with minimal editing another feature i rely on a lot is the eye autofocus it's super accurate uh, whether i'm doing portraits with my 85 millimeter lens or i'm kept uh, taking photos of animals the autofocus nails it every time and the uh, eyes are sharp every time i can focus more on composition and cre creativity rather than worrying if my shots are clear so for anyone creating social media content the proxy files feature is a big plus this camera lets you create proxy files right on the sd card which makes it so easy to edit or post videos directly from your phone. It's practical, especially if you're on the go and need something ready to share. Another thing I find incredibly useful is the raw file transfer. Uh, I can send raw files to my phone even when the camera is off. This has been great for me after shoots, especially if I'm at a cafe or a coffee shop and want to do a quick edit on my phone. No laptop needed. Yes, it does drain the battery a bit, but the convenience is totally worth it. Last thing, finally, talk about the 10-bit color depth in the video. This makes a big difference in color richness. I shot on a travel video last year with a camera that didn't have 10-bit and the colors felt a little bit flat. I'm not completely happy with that. But with the 10-bit on the A7CR, the colors look so much more vibrant and alive. It adds depth to the footage, which is really valuable if you're aiming for high quality results that is all right so there you have it that's my honest take on the sony a7cr and my experiences with the ups and a bit of the downs overall i'm really happy with it especially for my work in travel portrait and brand project if you're looking for a compact high quality setup that can handle both photos and videos this camera is a solid choice like any gear it's not perfect but now you know what you can expect if you have any questions about the experience or this camera uh, drop them in the comments i try to answer everything as best as i can and if you'd like a deeper dive into one of these points let me know i'd be happy to do a follow-up video thanks for watching and i hope my experience helps you decide if the a7cr is the right camera for you all right peace